Hello, in this video, I'm introducing two main concepts that are very closely related to Creative Commons licenses. They are the copyright and the public domain. Copyright is the right to copy. This means that the original creators of products and anyone they authorize to are the only ones with the exclusive right to reproduce the work. In order to make copies or make adaption, you need the permission of the copyright owner. Opposite to the copyrighted work, when a work is in the public domain, it is free for use by anyone for any purpose without restriction under copyright laws. Creative Commons licenses do not affect the status of a work that is currently in the public domain but only apply to works that are protected by copyright laws. It makes it easy for creators to share work without giving up total control of their works or spending countless hours granting permissions. In the last video, I used this image to explain the case of Mickey Mouse copyright extension in the USA. Today, let's go backwards before 1790 to trace the history of copyright. The first copyright act was called the Statute of Anne and was published in 1710 in the UK. It was the first statute to provide for copyright regulated by the government and courts rather than by any private parties. The new law prescribed a copyright term of 14 years, with a provision for renewal for another 14 years. Following this, the work's copyright will expire, with the material falling into the public domain. This statute was later replaced by the Copyright Act 1842 and regulated the duration of copyright protection to be the lifetime of the creator plus seven years, or 42 years from the first publication of the work, whichever comes earlier. The copyright can protect the right of creators to exploit economic benefits from their works which is a utilitarian purpose of copyright. The copyright can protect the authorship rights of creators so that their names are always properly cre credited and associated with their works, which is the author's moral rights. And it is in fact to protect a deeper connection between authors and their works. From the last video, you already know that the copyright laws grant copyright protection to both individual creators and corporate creators. Sometimes the work is created by an individual person, but the copyright actually belongs to the organization he or she works for. Sometimes the copyright is transferred to an organization. Take the example of the academic publishing Often a researcher writes a paper, and after the paper gets accepted to a journal, a copyright transfer form is completed by the author in order to transfer the right to the publisher. Sometimes if the work was created by collaboration, you and your collaborators may be co-owners of the copyright. Normally, the moment when you create a new work that is original and creative and fix it in a tangible form, the copyright is automatically granted under the copyright law of its birth country. However, granting copyright is different from registering copyright. In some countries, there is a voluntary procedure to register and uh, renewal copyright of your works, such as in China, Canada, and Japan. In some other countries, copyright registration and renewal is not available as a procedure with the government, such as in Israel, Germany, and Sweden. Works that are copyrightable are very limited to mainly art-related works. 
stretching from literary, music, visual arts, dramas, cinema works. To draw your attention, computer software and databases are also copyrightable, but a whole website is not. Music is copyrightable, but choreographic works are not. Other uncopyrightable works include ideas, procedures, principles, discoveries, facts, fashion, etc. As you can see that, copyright protection is very limited to a certain range of works. After all, it is only one branch of intellectual property protection. If you do not find your work copyrightable, you may want to reach out to other types of intellectual property protection, such as patents, trademarks, trade secrets, trade address. The patents offer probably the widest protection to your creativity. Almost anything can be patented. You can check out Google's patents database to see some pattern examples behind Google. Trademarks protects names and logos of business, for example. Trade secrets protect business secrets to ensure the competition advantage of their owners. Trade dress protects the visual appearance of a brand. Industrial design rights protect also the visual design not of products or services or brands, but of objects that are not purely utilitarian, such as a three-dimensional pattern used to produce industrial handicraft. Take Coca-Cola as an example. Its logo and name are protected as a trademark. Artificial sweetener pro protected as a pattern. BPA-free technologies protected as a trade secret, and its bottle design protected as a trade address. Copyright can offer only a period of time to protect the exclusive rights of using the created works. And every copyright is scheduled to expire, which is a good thing. Once the copyright over a protected work expires, the work enters the public domain, where the concept of intellectual property doesn't apply. Besides expiring, there are three other ways for work to enter the public domain. The work was never entitled to copyright protection, such as those uncopyrightable works. The creator dedicates the work to the public domain willingly, any creator can use the public domain icon shown on the screen to explicitly express their desire of donating their creations to the public domain. The final way is that the copyright holder failed to co comply with the formalities of copyright by properly registering or renewing the copyright in some countries that require such a procedure. Copyright laws are rigid, but not absolute. The design of copyright laws often leaves space for exceptions and limitations. Some purposes are exempted as acceptable activities under the copyright protection scope. These activities include, but are not limited to, criticism of artistic works, parody, access for the visually impaired, in Japan, teachers can freely use copyrighted materials online for educational purpose until March 2022. This is one typical example of exception in the copyright laws. These exceptions and limitations are either clearly written as a list of activities in the copyright laws or exist in flexible guidelines besides the copyright laws. Many countries also have compulsory licensing schemes, which allows to pay fees to the copyright owners for the right of particular types of reusing without asking permission. Think about the 
all the subscription plans paid by the university libraries to different academic databases and publishers. That behaviors fall under the compulsory licensing schemes. This is the end of the video. I hope through it you have known the copyright and the public domain better as two concepts. Thank you for watching.